My name is Tommy Versetti. I was arrested for murder back in 71. This traumatic event changed me forever. I made an oath to never kill anyone again. Fifteen years later, I went up for parole and somehow I was granted freedom. To me, this is a sign that I must continue my ways of being a pacifist and fighting the good fight. I will not waste anybody unless I am absolutely forced to with no way to continue my mission. Let's begin. Please excuse my voice, I'm all emotional right now and I'm going through a nasty virus. Pray for me. Yes, I'm a Steam gamer. This is the original GTA Vice City version with mods installed that enhance my gameplay experience. Screw the defective edition and anyone who says it's good. If that's the version you make videos with, you should be ashamed. It's an insult to my legacy. Shit! Then they never let him out. He kept his head down. Immediately after I was released from prison, my fat boss Sonny Ferrelli sent me down to Florida Vice City. I'm getting involved in a drug deal. I really hope I don't have to kill anyone. Hey, hey guys, it's uh, Ken Rosenberg here. Hey, hey, great, hey. Well, uh, I'm gonna drive you guys to the meet, okay? That's my new friend, now, I've my lawyer, Ken Rosenberg. They... I thought the deal would be smooth. I thought wrong. Got it? 100% pure grade A Colombian, my friend. Let me see it. The greens? 10s and 20s. Used. Everyone at this spot was gunned down except me because reasons. Is it another deal, blessing from the Lord friend. for being a pacifist or just my plot armor? <laughs> oh, shit! I was literally in front of an M4 and an M60, yet all the bullets somehow miraculously missed me. Come on, get out of here, but killed everyone else. You know why? Because my colleagues in the dealer weren't pacifists like me. That's why I survived. It's a blessing. I poked my head out of the gutter for one freaking second and fate shoveled shit in my face. Go get some sleep. What are you gonna do? I'll drop by your office tomorrow and we can start sorting this mess out. I told my paranoid pal to get some sleep, then he ran off to his office. I have no idea who this bike belongs to or if this is even his car, but I don't really care. I'm not going to kill anyone, but I will steal their vehicles if I have to. I thought this challenge would be simple, but I was in for a surprise. And just like that, I already failed. It reminds me of this one time when my friend tried doing a pacifist challenge too and ran over a pedestrian in his first mission. No matter. I'm just going to restart my life. I arrive at my new hotel, not a dime in my pocket. As I stop to admire the beautiful view, a guy a few meters away from me has a heart attack. Or so I thought. It looks like he was murdered by a guy in a purplish suit driving a blue banshee. I wanted to help, but there was nothing I could do anymore. And the guy who killed him just decided to walk away while leaving his expensive sports car behind. When cops showed up to the scene, they did absolutely nothing. And the dead guy just vanished. I think I'm hallucinating. Nothing more. Inside the motel, I suddenly heard people throwing hands outside. As a pacifist, I'm gonna see if I can break up the fight. Okay, never mind, it's a cop throwing hands. This is the same guy who ran over that innocent pedestrian a minute ago. The cop is finally serving justice to the murderer. You got information? No? My goodness, what on earth is happening here? Needless to say, but it looks like the citizens of Vice City ain't pacifists like me. I've only been at my hotel for over a minute and already I've seen numerous murders. And now the goddamn ambulance killed somebody, what the hell man?
Like, just look at this. These guys are meant to save people, not kill them. And a paramedic got stuck under his own vehicle. As a pacifist, I think it's my duty to save him. I don't care about my stolen money, merchandise, or informing my fat boss, Sonny Ferrelli, of the botched deal. Saving people is more important to me. After I saved the paramedic, his partner decided to leave him behind. The sheer amount of disrespect here is funny and sad. But I think it's time I continue. I gotta call my dumb Don. I arrived at my room and the first thing I did was give him a call. Hello, Sonny. Tommy! Tommy, it's been too long. As soon as I heard his voice, I smashed my phone in a fit of rage. I just can't stand the man. He's the reason why I spent 15 years of my life in jail. And he's the reason I had to kill people. I spent the night in my hotel. In the morning, I went to check on my pal, Ken Rosenberg. I'm really trying to not hurt people. Come on, son. Go get some sleep, he says. <laughs> I have been sitting in this chair all night with the lights off, drinking coffee. You're gonna find out who took our cocaine. And then I'm not gonna kill them. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh, stop by Raphael's. Tell him I said. with the way I'm dressed. Okay, look. look respectable. Okay, go, come on. Who does that guy think he is? Now I gotta dress like a chump as well as hang out with him? I like this shirt. When I arrived to the party, I realized it's full of criminals and I didn't really want to hang around them. As a pacifist, I don't think it's moral to be with people like these. Well, I mean, not everyone's bad. And the colonel told me, Buenas noches! Buenas noches, even though it's still morning. Then his daughter came out of nowhere and wanted me to take her to a club. Please, excuse me. Mercedes? Now I have to drive her around on my Faggio. I hope she doesn't mind it. Will you be working for my father? Maybe. It's so difficult having a rich and powerful father. Vamos. We sit the hard event and spell a little dota. I feel you, man. See you around, handsome. I'm sure you will. Well, that was an interesting morning. Honestly, I have no idea how I will get my money and the merchandise back without having to resort to violence. Look, I'm real tired. I'm gonna make myself some coffee and then I'll continue my story. Catch you later. <laughs>